If you haven't heard, the Acura RSX is coming back. In the form of an EV crossover. So. Oh, and it's going to run off an AI powered operating system. That is Asimo OS, the vehicle OS which evolves with every journey it takes with the driver, creating an experience where your car feels like a true partner. Shall we go see a beautiful view? So in this video, we're gonna take a look at what we know so far about the new RSX, but more so than just that, I wanna dive into Asimo OS, which is going to be Honda's new operating system for not only the new RSX, but their entire next generation of vehicles, which they are calling software-defined vehicles. Yes, Honda is naming their new operating system after their cute little robot. Hello, Mark. It's nice to see you. It's nice to see you too, Asimo. I am happy to be here with you today. Good marketing move, not gonna lie. Most of the information I'm gonna share with you in this video comes from two of Honda's own press releases, one on the new RSX prototype and one on their vision for software-defined vehicles, uh, which describes the details and features of Asimo OS. And I will link those two press releases in the video description so you don't have to take my word for anything. Now, when I say AI powered, many of you are probably thinking that means AI and machine learning will be used to enhance the vehicle's driver's aids and self-driving features. And yes, they will be using AI to improve those features and those systems, that's a big part of it. But that's not actually what prompted me to make this video. I realized the masses who, unlike me, actually buy new cars are for the most part in favor of automated driving features. I know that from working at dealerships for many years. I'm a little more concerned with the whole listening and watching occupants through the in-car cameras and microphones and using that to infer your emotions and suggest things to you like switching drive modes, what music you listen to, and when and where you should stop. Allow me to quote to you directly from Honda's own press release on software-defined vehicles and Asimo OS. Honda will further advance existing connected vehicle technologies and incorporate multimodal generation AI to utilize a variety of data obtained from cameras and other sensors sensors inside and outside the vehicle to offer in-vehicle experiences that reflect the emotions and intentions of the occupants. Honda SDVs will proactively make suggestions that they deem most appropriate at the time. For example, when the user is taking a long drive with their pet, the vehicle will find pet-friendly cafes and restaurants and suggest the users take a break. When the vehicle detects a child crying in the cabin, it will suggest to play music that would be fun for children, and the vehicle will suggest switching to a mode that prioritizes riding in comfort in coordination with the integrated dynamic dynamics control technology. The more the user drives it, the more the vehicle advances to achieve the ultra-personal optimization. The AI accumulates a history of what the occupants have selected in various situations, and just like a smartphone's predictive texting feature, the vehicle will make predictive suggestions. The more history the Honda SDV accumulates, in other words, the more the customer uses the vehicle, the better the suggestions the vehicle will offer tailored to the preferences of the user. Honda SDVs will eventually grow to be a partner that understands the user the most and supports comfortable and convenient daily use of the vehicle. Now, Honda's current privacy policy states that they don't collect or use any of the footage or audio from your in-car cameras or microphones, so that stuff should just be between you and the AI that controls your vehicle. I feel so much better. Now the SDV press release goes on to talk a lot about the vehicle developing a deeper understanding of the occupant's emotions and intentions. And I just, I'm sorry, am I the only one? I don't want my car inferring my emotions, thank you very much. I mean, like any car guy, I do talk to my car, of course, but you know, I don't actually want it to talk back. Once again, I'll quote directly from the press release. The system can accurately estimate that a child is crying from the video and audio inside the vehicle and suggest changes to the vehicle's interior environment. <laughs> So what, is your car co-parenting your kids now? Most kids who are crying in the backseat aren't crying because they want the climate control turned down a degree or two or they don't like the song that's playing. I mean, come on. Now, a word that gets thrown around a lot when advertising this sort of technology is convenience. Well, I'm starting to think that things are getting a little too convenient and I'm not so sure it's healthy for society. I think humans need to learn to embrace a little bit more inconvenience in their lives again. Maybe then we wouldn't be having meltdowns over things that should be nothing more than minor irritants. <laughs> Another phrase that they use a lot in this press release was minimizing stress. And relating to that, I wanna read you another quote I found kind of funny. In addition to minimizing various stresses related to the use of a car, such as driving, 
and getting in and out of the vehicle, Honda SDVs will offer new value that maximizes the fun of using a car. All right, fine, driving can certainly be stressful at times. I sweat bullets every time a Dodge Ram pulls up behind me, but getting in and out of the vehicle is a stress for people now too? How helpless are we here? Now on the automated driving side of things, Honda is partnering with Helm.ai, as is Volkswagen actually, to use their AI-based image recognition technology to enhance their Honda sensing systems with the goal of becoming the first automaker to enable level three automated driving, which means hands off, eyes off, in all driving situations. And Honda's really serious about this. They're actually an investor in Helm.ai. Now I don't want self-driving cars, but that's just me. And I realize that many people would say, put your cane down, old man. We do want self-driving cars. That would be awesome. Well, don't worry, you're gonna get them. The degree of acceleration slash deceleration, steering speed and other driving behaviors vary depending on the driver's preferences and driving skills. The AD-ADAS for future Honda SDVs will learn the driver's tendencies and become capable of executing, for example, gentle or agile overtaking. And I know lots of modern cars already have driver's aid features that you can't turn off, but the part which really stands out to me there is where it says driving behaviors vary depending on driver's preferences and driving, and driving skills. And that's not the only time in the press release that it talks about learning the driver's skill levels. So my question is, is the OS going to be judging my driving skills and adjusting the driving characteristics of the vehicle accordingly? Now it also says uh, in that section that this will be implemented in future SDVs. So that, that part's not necessarily going to be in the new RDX. Now I know what some of you are saying, hey, a lot of drivers in my city need that. I don't dispute that, fair point. But is this really the path we want to go down? I mean, what's gonna happen a few generations from now? Are people even gonna to learn to drive at all anymore? Or are we all just gonna be chauffeured around in self-driving software-defined vehicles that service up destination recommendations like some kind of algorithm? Bruh, can you believe our grandparents used to have to drive cars themselves? <laughs> what savages. I don't know about you guys, but I hope my grandchildren do have to think and learn to do things themselves, even if there is slightly more risk involved. But all right, enough of me waving my cane at my dystopian future visions. Let's actually take a look at this thing at least what's been released so far. So the styling is, well, not too long ago, I did a video on the Lexus ES, and this is really reminding me of the new ES. Manufacturers just love that single line tail light nowadays, don't they? Have you also noticed that brands also seem to like spelling out their brand name with really widely spaced letters now, instead of just putting their logo on the back? <laughs> that makes them look more premium, don't you know? Anyways, the, the new RSX, it pretty much just looks the same as everything else does nowadays. One horizontal line for the tail light, and narrow squinty LED headlights. So I, I don't know, do you guys like it? As of recording this video, they haven't really released any interior pictures yet, but we can kind of see the seats here in this promo video on Acura's YouTube channel. Hi. Apparently it's gonna have a big wraparound infotainment screen and pretty much everything will probably be integrated into it. Powertrain, like specs and details and stuff aren't yet released, but it will be an EV built on Honda's new Zero Series platform. So it won't be using GM's platform like they did on the Prologue and the ZDX. So this will actually be the first Honda built EV platform on sale in North America. It does have Brembo brakes. <laughs> <laughs> Honda must have signed some deal with Brembo because they're putting them on everything now, whether it needs it or not. Nobody better try telling me this is an enthusiast car because it has a race inspired steering wheel and Brembo brakes. Acura says the RSX will be available in the later half of 2026 and pricing's not yet released, but Car and Driver is estimating it will start around 55,000 and I have no doubt they'll be able to sell it for that, at least that. I mean, with dealer markups, some idiots are already paying more than that for the new Prelude. So I don't even know if I can be mad at the dealers. Like, yeah, it's shady, but I mean, if you're gonna be that big of a sucker. And by the way, if you don't know, the US MSRP on the new Prelude is 43K, which is way too much. Uh, and that's about what I expected it to be, despite people in the comments trying to assure me that it was gonna be in the 30s. LOL, it's not gonna be 45K. If Honda did that, there would literally be no reason to buy it versus a Type R. Honda would be beyond stupid to price it that high. I want you guys to come back to this when they release the pricing. Now look. All my enthusiast biased opinions on this new model aside, this car has absolutely nothing to do with the RSX. Even if you take the EV part out of the equation, the original RSX was a sporty two-door hatchback and this is literally a soccer mom crossover. The only reason this is called the RSX is to generate marketing hype, get people talking about it, 
well, I guess that worked. It's the exact same marketing strategy they used on the new Prelude, which is very little to do with any Prelude heritage, except for maybe the fact that it has two doors. If you read through Acura's August 2025 press release on the new RSX, which I've linked in the description, they don't even mention the original RSX or even acknowledge that it is a nameplate revival. They just talk about it like it's a completely new model because it is. They just didn't want to use a new name for it because if they called this the Acura YDX, no one would be talking about it. But despite the fact that this car has nothing to do with the OG RSX, I actually think it will sell because Acura is not making this car for people who want a sporty two-door RSX today. They're making this car for people that wanted a sporty two-door RSX 20 years ago, but now they're 45 with three kids and they just want something they don't have to bend down too much to get in and out of something that minimizes the various stresses related to the use of a car, such as driving and getting in and out of the vehicle. But I would encourage you to read the press releases I linked in the description because you don't have to take my word for it. And let me know what you think of not only the new RSX, but the future of AI software in vehicles in general. And it's not just Honda, all manufacturers are gonna be jumping on this bandwagon. So are you cool? with cameras watching and listening to everything you and your family do in your vehicle. Even if that footage stays between you and the AI operating system like it's supposed to, I'll stick with my DC4, thank you very much. Oh.